They used to say, you the strong one, girl. You're not allowed to cry. So my tear duct's been backed up since I was nine. And for a very long time, I thought that crying was a sign of weakness and fear, so I go to war with my eyes just to hold back my tears, promising to never let one fall. So I kept my head to the sky with my back to the wall, my pen to the pad, my no hearts on my sleeve, but living with no emotion makes it hard to breathe, to sleep. It makes it hard to dream. So I lived nightmares and wrote down everything I seen to a rhyme scheme. My poetry sound like a crime scene, but it was damn sure entertaining. And as I slow, I could feel my back duck, tear duck straining. Poetry became my salvation, my counselor, my coach, my mediation, my prayer for my meditation. It was my underground railroad that helped me escape when I began to fill my brain to capacity. I'd imprison myself mentally. I just wanted to feel free. So I became good with words, yet I lacked communication. I could write award-winning poems but couldn't hold a conversation. Eventually, poetry became my only form of expression and it was a blessing except when I realized that no one was listening to the words that I never said. So I kept a monkey on my back with bad thoughts in my head writing volumes of poetry that would never be read and I began to implode. All of the energy that flowed through me was begging to be exposed. I was ready to explode, so I began to grace stages with pages of poetry that I committed to memory unbeknownst to me. It's like subconsciously I was preparing for war, not knowing one day I would battle some of the most epic poets that have been played in stages for ages, but the feeling was contagious and I was damn sure courageous, although I never knew how I could care. Because I've never been big on metaphors and large words. I always made it easy to consume my nouns and verbs. And eventually, I was reciting rhymes for superheroes and living legends, spitting verses in churches before we sent my loved ones to heaven. Poetry showed me what it felt like to be free, if only for that moment. So every time I get a stage, I make sure that I own it. So that when you walk away, you say you still the strong one, girl. But it's OK to cry. But get those monkeys off your back and wipe those tears from your eyes. Tell the world your story and please don't compromise because when no one else was there, poetry kept you alive. Keep your head to the sky and give your heart some room to breathe. Write some words worthy of a read or maybe just a listen. And don't worry about being too literary. Just stay true to your art. Use your God-given talent and speak the words from your heart. Be the voice of the people and please continue to dream, but it's time to let go of your nightmares and create your happy ending. Thank you, that's tear gas. Thank you guys, I the energy, I love it. I needed a stage, it's been a long time since I've gotten a stage. I've been working, working, working too much. Not too much, it's all it's good, but it's time for the stage. So this last piece I'm gonna do for you guys before I exit is called Smoke Signals. And it's a little alternative, but uh, I'm from Denver, Colorado. And y'all know about us. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Google Denver right now, Denver 2014. You'll figure it out. All right, this is Smoke Signals. <laughs> I send smoke signals to heaven, asking God for better days and praying that he's listening. And as the smoke glistens in the reflection of the moon, I take another deep breath as I gaze into the sky. Ashes begin to fall like changed seasons, and I imagine I can fly. Realizing the only reason I get high is to get closer to God. I know it may sound odd when I can get a Bible or Quran or ask a group of Muslims about the jihad because they say the only way to access God is through the same organized religions that created these restrictions. The people are being convicted of sinning simply for being different. Wars, death, and prison, it's all part of a system to speed up our demise. They consider us disposable so they cloud us with their lies. Hypnotized and under a spell, trying to avoid hell by following a man-made definition of sinning. And in the beginning, these stories went through many rewrites and translations. But the only thing that remains consistent is that Jesus paid for our sins, so we are forever in debt. 
They place ATMs in the front of churches to make sure you never forget. <laughs> Living in a crazy world, sometimes it's hard to remain sane, so we spark the only flame that can ignite our brains and make us more open-minded. Free from the mental captivity that has kept us so blinded. Praying we can retain all the information that we've been provided, but blessed with this sermon so we know how to divide it. The real from the fake, the truth from the lie. Take another deep breath and I get more high. Elevated and free, no longer third eye blind. Finally understanding that place and time are based on each person. And until you felt his pain, you'll never understand why he's hurting. And I'm certain the only reason I get high is to get closer to God. I know it may sound odd when I can pick up a religion, but which one? Pick one. Christian, Baptist, or Buddhism? Catholic, Judaism, or Mormon? Christian sacrifices a sermon? Pastor, pulpit, or congregation? Is your religion based on your spirituality or your participation? When there's so much to choose from, the confusion will force people to fall for an illusion. Identifying the problem but no action toward the solution, that's why we're still waiting for the revolution, which, by the way, will be televised live right before your eyes, but most people still won't see it. Because they become so desensitized that even if they try, they still won't believe it. So wrapped up in conspiracy theories, internet zombies wasting all their energy, worried about the Illuminati. <laughs> A generation misguided. Too bad they're not bright enough to see that they could be the ones shining. So the sheep stay sleep well if you are enlightened. And the truth is there is a hierarchy based on status, wealth, and clout. But the only real secret societies are the ones that we don't know about. So our primary concern should be getting back to our higher selves and regaining the use of our entire brains. Stop being so dependent on technology. Replace computers with your memory, telephone with telepathy, television with visualization techniques. Reopen your crown chakra so we can really become kings and queens. We're just trying to get free so we can spread our wings and fly, replace dead cases with levitation as I gaze into the sky. Realizing the only reason I get high is to get closer to God. I know it may sound odd, but today was better than the day before, so of course, I take that as a blessing, and I'm guessing maybe God got my message when I send my smoke signal to heaven. I'm Jay Harris, y'all. Thank you.